Hello guys, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'm going to share how I've made an Anki add-on for the very first time. I've made two, they are in the link in the description, you can download them with the add-on code for Anki. And this video is a video I've wanted to make for so long, and um, I finally had the time to do it for the last couple of weeks, and that's why I've had a bit of a break to make these two Anki add-ons. And in this video, I'm going to explain what both of them do, so you can download them and get useful uh, and find them useful <laughs> and then also I'm going to explain how I did it with using ChatGPT and tools like that. I'm a mechanical engineering student, I have experience with coding and this was just like a really fun little project that I think more people could do to make Anki a better software and it could, I think ChatGPT is going to be great because it will help people like me from not a traditional coding background when they have an idea they can go and do it right and this is what this video is to share what I've done and I did it very quickly I did I made both of these within like one day and it was like really fun I really enjoyed it and yeah let's get into it so the first add-on as you can see on the screen is a weekly planner this is inspired from when I was in my A-levels and when I study I like to have a week plan and plan out when I'm going to do my Anki decks when I'm going to do my revision and I think this is really useful because it has it all within Anki. And for me, that's like my hub for how I make my flashcards and study throughout my semesters. Um, so as you can see here, fundamentally how it works, the add bar adds the deck. You can search for that and you just click it and it adds it there. And then for that day, you just double click it and then you can go to review that deck. You can go back. When you're done with it, you press the minus sign. If you didn't do it for that day, you can press there to move it to the next day. And then so on. It goes back and forth. The thing I struggled with to try and make this add-on was trying to make sure it stays there. So these all save within a file within the Anki add-on so that when you restart it, hello me, <laughs> um, it, it stays there, right? So it's saved within the memory. This is a very simple add-on, but it's something that really helps me and and it helps me stay more productive, but I actually have a physical plan for the week. I know with Anki you have to do all your Anki add-ons, review all your decks every day, but for me I find that not very attainable and I like to have like Monday I do this, Tuesday I do this, and then um, it helps split it up throughout the week. So this is like a really helpful one. Um, when to ask your answer the question of what happens when you move on to Tuesday, it will just show Tuesday and then Saturday now. And then say, for example, you didn't move this over to the next day in time, it will just delete it because I found it very difficult to try and find the way to code it so that when it moves on to Tuesday, this adds over there automatically. So make sure when you're using this add-on that you either move it over to the next day when you haven't done it or you just need to add it back again for the next day. It's just a very simple add-on. Didn't want to overcomplicate things with having like four week plans or whatever, but that's number one. Right, now for add-on number two. This is an add-on that I've been wanting somebody to make for years. I've been using Anki for like, I can't remember how long now, like five, six, seven years. And um, it's been something that's really helped me, but I find it really tedious because it's really like, not very modern. It's not very easy to like, edit in the windows so i created an add-on called the smart keyboard <laughs> pretty much um don't tell anyone but i just kind of like copied notions functionality of how you can create this and it creates a bullet point and you can make lists of bullet points very easily you can make a numbered list very quickly now okay do you see how that you just press one and press space and you can add it and the same thing with bullet points you can do the same thing so you do the dash then space, or you can do dash then enter. So that is a very simple functionality, but the most important one that I added was a toggle. <laughs> I've did this before where I had like a edit extra field here, and then it toggled it within the template. But to show you, just do that, press space, and you say, how are you doing? <laughs> um, and then you can add stuff into here, and then you can press option enter to close it and open it okay and then you just press enter to add another ones and then you press press enter twice to get rid of that and then you can double click them to open them um, and add stuff inside it and it's just very simple you can add bullet points inside it 
and so on. Something also I added was the ability to add a header function. So what you do is you press option three within um, a MacBook keyboard to get hashtag, press enter, then you can say, how you doing? Um, then um, that will give you a big header function. You can also do two hashtags. I'll give you a smaller function. Um, three hashtags and I'll give you a smaller, even smaller function. And then you can see that's the main functionality. That's the add on simply that. Okay. And also another functionality is say, let's pick a YouTube video, my one. Okay. You just put the link in there, press enter and it adds the YouTube video. Okay. This is a video of how I <laughs> made Anki cars from my third year engineering degree very useful highly recommend to watch it after this one if you haven't watched that one um and yeah that's the main functionalities this is something that i did this morning uh, before i um, published the add-on which you can now download it's just something that is so so like needed i think and i've been adding youtube videos into my anki cards and but previously i was having to paste in all this html code here separately and it was just really annoying. I just wanted somebody to make what I've just made. So paste it, press enter, and you can add a YouTube video. You can add big headers, all different sizes. You can add toggles. You can add numbers lists very easily. And yeah, that's the second add-on. This is something that I think is very useful and something I'm going to use on a daily basis because I use Anki a lot to study. And yeah, I hope you find that useful. Now I'm going to go on over how I use ChatGPT to help me make this quickly and my setup and yeah, and how maybe you could make one too if you have an idea. Right, now I'm going to explain how I made these Anki files and how you could potentially do it too. So in the add-on window that you can go find, okay, you have your Anki add-ons. The best way you can find out how to make an anti anki add-on is one by looking at the files of previous ones, right? And you can see all of these have th something similar. They ha all have this initial file, right? So you need that to initialize the thing to work. You also need these um, manifest and meta files. I'm not going to go into the details of um, what they do and why they do it, but you can see each one of these have a specific structure. And you can explain this structure, ChatGPT can explain the structure to you and then see how you can create or edit similar files to do what you want to do, right? So now I'm going to explain my files. So this is the one where I'm making the um, the week planner. So I've got the, the week style. This deck panel is the main thing that edits how the number of days and it alternates it uses time code so that you are on the current date and it also does stuff like delete outside that date and then all these files are doing an initial thing and you can get ChatGPT to explain it to you okay in in um in like vs code you can download this which is codex okay and you can prompt it like i have a lot of have had a lot of conversations with it and you can prompt it with the idea that you want and say, what are the initial files that I need to create this? And these are the initial files that other add-ons have used. And then you say, edit those files to help me get a starting point. And then what you do is that you can basically restart Anki and then it will show here what has been changed and it will show the bugs and you can copy the bugs over into there. So what I was doing, I was going back from forth with Codex and also having ChatGPT open to articulate the idea. So say for example, I also have another idea with an Anki add-on, which could potentially, you know, like with the Apple Watch um, thing, say, look, I have an add-on idea for a ring style widget, um, um, ring, ring style widget for Anki, like the Apple Watch um, ring thing. <laughs> Right, just like an idea, and then um, Anki add on, and then you can try and try and explain a prompt, okay? And how how you drop in like an example, for example, of how it works here, 
And then what I was doing is I was really defining the prompt of ChatGPT in this window and really asking what I really want and clearly laying out how it would be done. done. Then I would paste that prompt into Codex to then output it. And I'm not going to do that here because it will change all the files, but you get what I'm saying. It would do it here. You paste in what you want. Um, you know what? Why don't I just do it live? Let's create the next one. Okay. The Anki add-on for the smart keyboard. Okay. So I'm just going to copy that, go this over, rename this as ring template. Okay. I'm going to open this up in VS code, open ring template. So I've opened up ring template now <laughs> and, um, what I want to do is change these existing files. Like you need to change the initial file. You need to change these files inside it. And it loses a lot of JavaScript, the one that I was using, but you're going to change these initial files for that objective. So I'm going to say, add this into the prompt, make a prompt for yourself. So, okay. But then when you've got that prompt, you can put that back into codex and it'll edit it for you. Okay. I have an Anki add-on with these files. I want you to repurpose this for the ring progress widget. And then when this is done, copy it, um, put it into Codex, and it will edit the files to have a starting point. Okay. When I was going through and making the Anki add-ons, okay, obviously ChatGPT didn't do it all. Okay, I, I, I proofread it and did all of that other stuff and understood what the code did. But more importantly, it sped it up massively for me. And also it helped me understand how to make an Anki add-on. And for example, this will run away. It will change all the, the files for you. And then what you'll need to do is when it's edited the files, it's already in the Anki window, window. And you just need to keep restarting Anki and seeing if the, the edits make sense test if it works. So what I was doing, I was going back and forth and making sure there's no bugs within the toggle sections and how it works. There were some really weird bugs. Like when I was going back and forth, I couldn't go back and forth like that. See, it's still there a bit. Um, and I'm going to still edit the Anki add on, but see, like when you do that, you don't want it to break. And, um, yeah, you have to go back and forth with it and trying to make sure that when you're making the add on with Anki, and when you're making it with ChatGPT, you really define the bug. So that's what I'm trying to say here, is that what I would do is I'd find out what the bug was, which was for me for a long time was when I was going back and forth here, it would delete all these lines back here. So I couldn't go back. I was getting stuck. Anyway, I figured it out. And also weird ones when I was like that. And then um, it was, it was uh, I figured it out and I stopped the bug. But I was defining what was wrong with it and then asking for potential solutions. And then sometimes it, ChatGPT kind of didn't understand the bug. So I made it very clear in English what the bug was. And then when I had that bug and a solution for it from ChatGPT, I prompted it and said, look, this is a bug, find a solution. It would find, it would prompt it like that. Then I'd paste that, what the specific bug is and what specific solution is into Codex and Codex would output it. So here we've got two files are changed. It's already changed and added lines of code and removed some lines of code and it's deleted some files. Okay. And it's creating the UI for us. Okay. So this is in real time. Okay. I'm not editing this video at all that much. Um, and we're going to wait until this is finished. Um, this is almost finished now. So if I re, re if I, if I restart Anki, it could have it on the main screen. Okay, so there's a bit of a bug, but this is what I'm trying to say is that it's not going to do everything. So it's verifying the code now. Let me try and. And then, for example, you, when you've got a bug, you can paste that into, into ChatGPT and you can try and define it, right? But this isn't ready yet. But this is a prototype. I could make this Anki add on. Add on. It's viable and that could be the next one that I produce. So look out for it, right? But. The main thing is, I, I think, for me, like ChatGPT is amazing because it helps me be able to do more with less time, but and also like make sure that. So that what I would do is I just paste this deep this into here, and say what is the bug. Define it. So it's you have to have patience and keep going back and forth, and then when the file is outputting something. Um, 
like this, it will sort of tell you the fix. And then when it's told you the fix, you just post that into Codex, then you restart Anki, and it just does it. And you just keep going around like this until you've got a working model, right? And going back to my point, um, I think this is beautiful because for me, I love Anki. And also when, when I was growing up, one of my favorite hobbies was playing Legos, but not like building Legos from the script. It was just playing with random Legos and building whatever I wanted. And I think that's the cool thing with ChatGPT now. If you have an idea and you want to build something, just do it. It's fun. It's enjoyable. It's a bit tedious having to go back and forth like this, but see if this works now. Um, there's a bit of a bug there, but let's see, have a look if it works now. Yeah, so there's probably, like, I need to sit down and go through this a bit more, but if you get what I mean, um, so I think what's happened is it doesn't have the initial file anymore. No, it does have it. Okay, um, but yeah, you get what I mean. There's a back and forth process and you have to kind of critically think what it's doing and define what you actually want it to do, right? So... That's the most important function, I believe, is because ChatGPT has got so good now at coding and helping us be able to like critically think, um, you just need to be able to define what the, the problem is and just state what you find or you think or ChatGPT thinks is a solution to that problem. So for example, it's made some weird sidebar. No data yet then I would paste it like that and say, look, ChatGPT, Ch why is it like on the side? Why is it on the side bug? I want just a circle of how many reviews, right? And I think a good idea is you can look on all the add-ons there existing. So for example, what I would do now is try and look up the already existing add-ons that are available on Anki that you can download that could be similar to this and then find how they do it. For example, when I was trying to figure out how to replace like a symbol like this with a bullet point, I already had an existing add-on that was like replace symbols where for like, say you had like theta, it replaced that word with a like symbol for theta. So I used that a lot for like editing and making like latex and key flashcards. So what my, my point is here is look out how people have already done it on Anki and the add-ons that are already there. Look at the structure, paste that into ChatGPT, understand how the structure works, and then try and make your own for an idea. The idea is the most important part. And then when you've got that idea, try and execute on it. And then when there's problems, define them and try to find a solution for them and just have patience. It took me an hour, um, like around three hours of this to try and get like a first prototype. And then it took me probably like another 10 hours each probably to like fix all the bugs with it. So that's the hard part because you can get with ChatGPT a very quick f first prototype, but there'll be really weird like bugs and stuff like I had with mine. And there's still weird stuff with this, but the most important thing is that it works. And again, I want to reiterate my point. If you have an idea with Anki and if you used it for a long, long period of time, and you said, I wish there was an Anki add-on that made it like this. Or for example, um, I got around an idea of like, look, Anki's quite complex. Why don't you just simplify it? Because like a lot of people don't understand how to use it. And that's another viable option. And I think that's a cool thing. Have, enjoy it, find it fun. And I hope you took some value from this video or is inspired to try making an Anki add-on for yourself and also I think look at ChatGPT is a great thing to cognitively offload, a bit like a calculator. So you can now do weird sums that you never used to be able to do before, but fundamentally you still have to know how to think clearly and critically think and have that problem solution mindset. And that's why I think STEM doing engineering was really useful for me because I learned that ability to define a problem and try to find a solution to it. And that's all that coding is really. And it's just made it more, accessible to the masses now because you don't have to get bogged down into the syntax and all the language stuff of it you can just focus on the problem solving so yeah hope you enjoy this video it's a bit of a different one but yeah and i'll see you all in the next one peace